also indeed. Uh, uh, also, the next acronym, of course, so this time it's uh, Tiny KG, Memory Efficient Training uh, Framework for Knowledge Graph Neural Recommender Systems. And we have Huawan Chen. I hope I'm saying that right. Thank you. Present. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. So, this is Huayan Chen from Visa Research. Today, I'm going to talk about the uh, Tiny KG. So, it's a framework how to train the uh, knowledge graph neural networks very efficiently in the training times. So basically, this is a joint work between the Visa Research and Rice University. So here's the agenda for today's talk. So the first thing I will introduce uh, was the noise graph uh, neural networks. And the second thing I will uh, introduce our proposed network, how to compress the GPU memories uh, for noise graph. And the third, we are going to introduce some of the experiment results. And the fourth, I will conclude the, the conclusions. Yeah. So noise graph is it's very popular in the recommended systems. So it, uh, compared to the like original user item by part of graph, the knowledge graph contains a rich context information. So for example, if it, it, we not only have the user and item, we also have uh, some of the item's attributes, for example, the images, the shape of the U, we might also say that this is interpreted by the Tony, and then we can see the Tony also interpreted by I see the file. By using this kind of a complicated knowledge graph, we can solve the cold start and long tailor issues in the systems. So this is a, a, not a new story. Uh, and also, the powerful of the knowledge graph because it can capture the, the long range information, for example, the user one and user two, user three, in the original papyrus graph, we might not see the relationship. But if we merge the uh, user item papyrus graph with the item attribute graph, consists as a knowledge graph, now we can just uh, achieve the relationship by go over this kind of the a knowledge graph in the systems, yeah. And this is uh, actually, this is not our contributions in this work, uh, just some background here. And, and we, in the real productions, we always need to care about the performance and memory, uh, especially, for example, in some in company like the Visa, we have a very big knowledge graph, like the different merchants, we have the merchants attributes, and we also have a car holders, also some of the device, email, phone numbers, this kind of information is pretty huge over the visas. And I think the traditional KG is very good, like the trans E. So it only contains the height, height relation and tethers. Uh, they, they treat these kind of three things independently. Uh, so it's very easy to implement and it's also easy to distribute. But the, I think there's also some disadvantage here. It cannot keep the long range dependency. So, for example, if we want to consider the multi hop neighborhood of the information, so traditional trends, it, it cannot do that uh, based on these simple equations here. And, and as, as, as I mentioned before, the knowledge graph like the KGNN and KGAT, it can, it's very popular to, powerful to capture the long range uh, signal and it can achieve the SOTA performance. But I think there is also a disadvantage that it needs to require to traversal multi hop a relationship in the knowledge graph, so which is very hard to distribu distribute because the, the graph is not IID data, so we cannot simply just uh, distribute this kind of graph in the, uh, independently. We need to consider the relationship. So our contribution is coming to here. So uh, how to compress the GPU memory for the KG -NAN. So we didn't change the network architectures for the knowledge graph. So this is uh, uh, how, how, how we are going to do that. The next thing, uh, we institute our tiny KG. So tiny, uh, tiny machine learning is, is now is very important because we have a very big data. And sometimes we try to deploy the models in the edge device, like a mobile firm, and we, we, we can stop a lot of uh, troubles, like the, the storage or, or, or how, uh, limit uh, resource, even the power. So this is basically we try to how to compress the memories uh, for the neural networks. And this, uh, this is a, a message passing schema uh, for the KGNN. So basically, for each layer, the input is some of the multiplied relationship matrix. And also we have an EL. EL is some of the entity embeddings. And we also have a theta error. Theta error is the model parameters here. So we just, uh, here's one instance of the uh, KG then is published by KDD. So the, the model is pretty simple one. So it just, a, here is some, something like the binary entity, entity relationship. And the EL is, uh, it's in, in entity embeddings and data as a model pointers. So they just simply time these three things and using a sigmoid functions as a nonlinear transform functions. 
and then we just go get to the next layer embeddings. So it, it's very simple, but if we take a close look at how the computational graph compute this kind of uh, message passing schema, we can see that in the first day, we need to time the E with the sparse message A in order to get H0. So basically, we need to decompose these functions into a multiple, multiple space in the forward uh, networks. Uh, and similarly, in the back propagations, we need to compute a gradient, like a computer gradient of E, H, and, and, and J0. So this is basically the, the auto differential uh, engines, like the torch or, or TensorFlow. They're using this kind of uh, computational uh, graph, how to compute this kind of message passing schema. But as we can see that in the forward, we need to store this kind of the active actions, E1, E2, to E0, into the GPU memories in, in, uh, in order to compute the gradients in back propagations. So they will cost the, they will domain the GPU memory. I will show next. Yeah, so basically we just took this equations and to see the memory cost here. So the first memory cost is the relation matrix, uh, which is original binary. So it's, it's not so cheap, uh, it's cheap, it's not expensive. Just some binary matrix A here. And also we have a model parameters. As we can see that the model parameters is also not very expensive. It's some kind of like a D by D. D is the size of the embeddings. And we find that the most, most dominate the, 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 the memory is called the intermediate active actions, like a H, J, E here in the computational graph. Because we can see the size is N by D. So for each entity, we need to store a corresponding active actions. So this is basically dominated GPU uh, in the knowledge graph. And in this world, we're trying to help to solve these problems by some of the quantitized uh, mechanism. Yep. So as I mentioned, so this is a very uh, short, uh, a very, very simple idea here. So in the, for, in, in the training, we need to save the activations. All of the layers, every day, every day we need to save the activations, and then we can pass these activations to, uh, in, in order to compute the gradient in the back propagations. So, so this is a memory bottleneck. And our solution is quite simple and very straightforward and very easy to use, especially nowadays the torch already released the API so we can touch the fundamental layers and change the uh, back propagations uh, routines. So here we in the forward quantity, we, in the forward pass, we just simply quantize our floating point uh, to the integers. So basically we just uh, using some of the stochastic rounding algorithm to, to convert the floating point to the integers. Yeah, it's, it's a very simple equation, it's very common used. And in the back provocations, we're using also a dequantitized step. So we need to also dequantize integers to the original floating point. So basically, in the forward, we quantize in the back provocation, and we just dequantize. So it's, this, is a, this is our design, so it's very simple. As we can see, that there's no very heavy operator in this kind of quantitized and dequantized step. Yeah, so um, basically this, this is our computational graph for the tiny kg. So uh, as I, I shown before, we just, in the forward, we just quantize into integers. So we can choose uh, integer one, integer two, integer four, integer A in the memory. And then we, in, in the paper location, we just dequantize it. And in our original paper, we also show that our, this simple quantitized state, it have a way where it's unbiased is unbiased and also it have a well bound variance. As we can see that the variant terms, it correlate to the dimensional of the embedding D. Also there's a, a beam, B, D is the number of uh, the B we want to stop. Also RB here is something like, like the, the number of the layers here. So uh, and the next that we just show our experiment result. So we're just using uh, a three very popular it's, it's not very huge, but I think we, we choose it as the best line for our tiny KG. And we choose the three popular uh, noise crop, uh, noise crop uh, neural networks here. So it's called a KGN, KGAT, and KGIN. So, so in our work, we are not going to propose a new architectures. We're just trying to comp compress the GPU memory. Yeah, and here's our result. So in the first column, uh, it's called a FP32. It's an original floating point. Uh, implement so it's totally supported by the the, the torch, and the, the the last four columns is our implement. So we're trying to quantize in the in eight, in four, in two, and in one. As we can see, that there's not much uh, accuracy lost. 
especially if we just take a look at N2 and the 14.32, they almost have a very similar performance uh, for different, across different data sets. And I will show you later uh, in terms of the memory speed, also this kind of the accuracy loss. Yeah, and this is our, our training curve. Uh, the, the blue color one is the original improvement, the 14.1. And the, the, the orange colors is our improvement. And we quantify into uh, uh, in integers two. And they almost have a similar, quite similar uh, training curve. Also, the, uh, as, as the apple go, we can see they, they, they almost converge to similar uh, performance. Yeah, because we doesn't train any architectures. We just train the memory routine, uh, how to store it in the memory, so. Yep, and I think this, is, this, this table also show uh, show, show, show the, 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 the memory, also the GPU time, and also our accuracy loss. And our baseline is still 14.2, uh, uh, 14.32. And we can see that in, in 8, it almost doesn't have any accuracy loss. Like the, for, for the first columns, they only have a zero, uh, ne negative 0 0.26% loss. But we, we, we save the twice memory uh, if we just, uh, uh, using the, the integer representations in the GPU memory. And also we might also have additional uh, training time because we need to, in the training we need to uh, quantize and dequantize even though there's no heavy operations but it still take time. So, so we, which means that we, we need a longer training time uh, compared to the original 14 point. Yeah. And if we just see the last, the last second columns, uh, even with a very low peak like the integer two, we still get very good accuracy, so only have a minus one point or one percent lost, but we, we save the like a seven times memory reductions, so which is uh, is very practical uh, for the knowledge graph. Yeah, um, but but if we just see the, the last column, if we want to extremely comp uh, quantize the memory just using the integer one, which means that in the memory we only store the binary values, so it, it might have uh, some accuracy loss. It is five percent, um, but but we can get like nine, almost ten percent memory reductions. So in the industry, they always a trade off between the uh, the memory and performance. Yeah. Yeah, basically, uh, this is our work. So we just propose a a, a, a simple uh, memory saving training framework for uh, uh, knowledge graph neural networks. So it it can support a low B activation max in the paper applications. And I think now the, the most uh, version of the PyTorch is supposed the Institute A, I, I think. But if I want to support even the world peak, I think the Torch currently it doesn't support these functions. So this, maybe this framework can fill this gap. And the second, we just introduced a quantized um, strategies to compress the activation map for paper uh, applications. So our quantized equation is very simple and also it's unbiased and its variance is well bound. Yeah, and the third, we, we, we find this kind of the, uh, our framework with the integers too. It can reduce the memory framework and also with, with, with only very small accuracy loss. Yeah, basically this is our talk. I uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. So, um, the, the most popular question right now is about the applications mm. of the knowledge graph. So there's a lot of interest. Uh, the question is, what's the application of the knowledge graph at Visa? Oh, okay. but I think you can also answer it in general. If yeah, you yeah, know. sure. So in a Visa, we have a, we have a, let's say, if a credit card purchases something in the merchants, we have a, almost the information, like the, even the car holder, the pen numbers, also the merchant. Merchant also have a category, like the Hofu and Costco, they might be also uh, some of the attributes. And also, we might also have the device information, like the post machine, and also the phone numbers, email. So this kind of the information, this kind of attribute is, is very uh, it, it, it is stored in our visa research. But as we can image, uh, visa have a, a, a trillions of users over the global, uh, glo glo global. So it's, it's how to store this entire big graph in the memory is impossible. So our original design is simply speed the graph by the location, like the Seattle we serve, store as a knowledge graph. And in the Palo Alto, we might also have another uh, knowledge graph because it's very huge, we cannot store in the memory. Uh, so this is uh, basically our motivations here. But giving a fixed GPU memory, how can we just loading the graph as large as possible? 
So this is why we introduced the tiny graph here. And basically, uh, because our visa is mainly focused on fault detections, this knowledge graph will pro provide some of the embedding for our downstream tasks, especially for the uh, more detections, uh, yeah, for the credit card. Wonderful. Uh, thanks for the clarification. There's more questions, but please uh, answer them on the, the hub, because we have to move on to the next speaker. Okay, sure. sure. Thank Let's you. thank uh, again. Thank you. Yes. Yeah.